So the first thing that you really need to know about bed bugs is accurate insect identification. Okay? Bed bugs, they're flat, they're oval, they grow up to about five millimeters in length, so you can think of them the same size and shape as an apple seed. Okay? Um, they're also about the same color. They're wingless, they don't jump, they don't fly. So if somebody's complaining of something jumping, and it's usually a flea, if that is the case, especially between the ankle and knee, fleas, not bed bugs. Okay? So the adults, as I said, they're oval shaped, there's no wings, they're as flat as a piece of paper before they feed. Once they feed, they do plump up, and then also after feeding, they turn more of a darker mahogany brown color. Bed bugs have a lifespan of about one year, and during that time, a female can lay anywhere between 200 to 500 eggs. So a bed bug can travel about 100 feet in order to gain uh, a blood meal, okay? So that's how bed bugs can travel between units, and also they can travel between buildings. Recently, over the summer months, we did see bed bugs actually traveling along the cable wire, through, out through the window, and into the next unit, because the cable wires were run along the outside of the unit. Bed bugs have been known also to lie dormant for about 14 months, okay? So it's basically, if they're not getting a regular meal, they basically uh, hibernate, like how a bear would, okay? They do breed very rapidly, and usually on an average day, though, a female will lay anywhere between three to four eggs. Here is a picture of the eggs. The eggs are actually whitish in color, okay? You can think of them as same shape as rice grains, but one-fifth the size. It's hard to distinguish between a cockroach excrement and bed bug excrement, especially along baseboards, but if it's in the bed, you can usually tell. But if you spray that excrement with water, it actually turns back red if it's from a bed bug. We do know that eradication of bed bug infestations is also very difficult. It's also very expensive and it's very time consuming. Okay? And we're also seeing huge insect resistance. Okay? A lot of people keep saying, oh, bring back DDT on a limited basis, even if we could, because we can't, we're not getting it back. Um, studies have shown that as early as 1944, bed bugs have begun to become resistant to DDT. And studies that they're doing recently on current bed bug populations show that they're actually resistant to DDT. So this is the structure of our bed bug project. So we have community-based response, education outreach, bed bug control issues, legislative review, public messaging, health issues, tracking and monitoring, and funding. We've also definitely promoted our integrated management, pest management approach, and that's basically how we deal and treat bed bugs. Um, and that's a combination of different things. So it's not just the actual spray, because spray alone will not get rid of a bed bug problem but involves things like vacuuming, caulking and sealing of a unit, making sure the laundry is done, steaming, and of course, education, right? Um, we work with many different external agencies uh, that provide personal support care and other housekeeping care to tenants to just see how we can better assist them. So as part of the impact, people have to remember that anyone anywhere can get bed bugs. Bed bugs do not restrict or keep themselves to social economic lines, okay? Whether you're low income, whether you're high income, middle class, doesn't matter, we're all at risk. Um, we do know though, if you are living in a multi-resident dwelling, you are probably at slightly greater risk uh, just because of how bed bugs can travel. Uh, your friends, your family members could be exposed as well, and you can ex be exposed also by travel. So basically that means everybody or anybody can potentially get bed bugs. So just looking at health impacts of bed bugs, currently all scientific uh, evidence points that bed bugs do not transmit any kind of communicable disease, okay? So they can't transmit hepatitis B, HIV, or hep C, okay? Um, a couple of reasons for that has to do with uh, the way in which bed bugs feed, number one. 
bed bug will feed off of me and then it goes off to digest its meal. It doesn't keep eating, okay? Once it's had its blood meal, it's done, it goes to digest it, goes to, back to where it was hiding. The other reason that they're suggesting is the bed bugs actually don't have the viral antigens within their body that allows those viruses to replicate, okay? But what we do see are allergic reactions. So some people have no reaction whatsoever to a bed bug bite. Some people have a delayed reaction, so they may not see a welt or a red mark for a couple of days, okay? And some people have an immediate reaction. So as soon as they're bitten, they'll get a red mark or they feel the intense itch. What we do see lots of too are secondary um, inf bacterial infections from scratching your bite marks. And recently we've seen about four severe anemic reactions. Bed bugs treatment and preparation is also very expensive, okay? It takes a lot of time. So imagine packing up your entire house, but you're not leaving. And you can't use cardboard boxes. You have to only use plastic bags or plastic <coughs> totes. And you have to remain that way for at least six week period. It's not an easy thing to do, okay? Some people, because of the extent of their bed bug problem, we have to actually relocate to another unit, okay? Or, or there's also some people who they realize they have a bed bug problem and they think just moving will solve their problem. There's also the loss of belongings. A lot of people, out of sheer panic, they throw out everything that they own, okay? And then a lot of times they actually don't have the money to replace those items, okay? So they're sleeping on the floor with no bed, there's no sofa, and there may be kids involved. And there's also a lot of embarrassment. A lot of people are ashamed. They don't want anybody to know that they actually have a problem, which also hinders us in our work because they don't say anything, they don't get treatment. So for the treatment process, there are six key points that are necessary for a successful treatment. Okay, first thing is to basically inspect the unit to make sure that it is in fact bed bugs and not something else that they have. And also sometimes that can be hindered because the person doesn't always necessarily give you access, especially if the person is a hoarder or if they have a lot of belongings or if they're even doing something illegal within the unit, right? They may not be able to get access to the unit. But once the, I, the bed bugs are actually correctly identified, then comes the preparation. So the preparation involves cleaning all items within the infected area as well as the surrounding area. So you have to reduce any clutter, so a lot of unnecessary items, little knickknacks, things like that, all of those need to be packed away, okay? Because all those things create areas where the bed bugs could hide or harborage sites, okay? So if these things aren't properly packed, and you have to also look at them to make sure there hasn't been any bed bugs in them, because if you pack them with the bed bugs in them, you're not gonna get rid of your problem. And then of course, after all that's done, there comes the treatment. A treatment consists of mechanical cleaning, so that's you know actually physically cleaning your baseboards and checking everything. And then there's the residual insecticide, which consists of two sprays, 14 days apart. And the reason it has to be two sprays 14 days apart is because of the eggs. Remember I said eggs hatch anywhere between eight and 14 days. If you don't get the second spray, you will have a new crop of bed bugs that are around and able to continue the cycle. So the sprays that we have, they're only effective on bed bugs that have already hatched. They have zero effect on the eggs. But there's not necessarily within those two sprays you will get rid of the problem. It really depends on how bad your infestation was. So if you catch your infestation early enough, two sprays does work. But other times, the person may be going through this process for up to three months or longer. If you see bed bugs on a person, it means they have a very large bed bug infestation within their home. Okay, and it's just incidental hitchhikers that get caught on the person as the person is going through their daily living within the home. So as their population grows, it expands from the bed. So it will go to the dressers. Um, it can get into their clothing. So as the person, because a lot of people too, they don't actually change their behaviors. So if they're getting dressed, it may be a habit that they throw their clothes on the bed 
before they actually um, put them on. So if they're throwing their clothes on the bed first, or depending on the proximity of where they keep their clothes to where the bed is, it's very easy for the bed bugs to crawl into clothes. Part of the reason why also the bed bug spread happens is the way in which bed bugs mate. They mate through a process called tragic insemination. So what that means is the female does not have any open parts. So in order for the males to inseminate females, what they do is they stab them in the, the abdomen. So because of that, females try to get away from the males, so they will go usually away from the greater population. So that's why you tend to find an obscure bed bug maybe in uh, a closet, but then she'll lay her eggs out in the closet too, right? So creating the infestation to grow. And the likelihood for the paramag to actually be taking it home with them is probably very small. I, like I said, I've been in the worst infested places that you can imagine and I've never brought anything home with me. So that's, that's it. So I don't, you I've never brought. the best practice procedure, the risk is minimal. That's correct, that's correct. And, and generally, I mean, even if you're afraid of bringing them home with you, um, I'm sure they have facilities. Do you guys have facilities here that they can actually change their clothes before going home? Change their clothes change the station. Yeah. So, you change your clothes, you know, don't make it a practice of bringing your clothes home. It's the same thing that, you know, I spoke with the hospitals about. Um, why are people coming to work in their scrubs and going back home in their scrubs? Your scrubs should be changed before you leave the hospital and bag it. If you don't, if there's no uh, facilities to do laundry on site, you bag it till you can get it to the dryer. Frankly, you should be changing into your scrubs when you get to work. Exactly. Yeah. Right? You shouldn't be wearing them no. on the subway no. and whatever on your way. When you get to work, you should be putting on your scrubs. When you're finished your shift, you should be putting back on your civilian clothes. Same thing should be here. Okay? And then as a practice, just because you don't know, unless the person is severely infested, and if they're really worried, it's uh, as they, when they take off their clothes into the dryer, Till there's enough to do a full load. That's it. Any other questions? Now you talked about them in the grooves of your shoes. Were they, did they, like, were they able to cling to your shoe, or was it the fact that the groove in your shoe was the, small enough that they actually... The groove in my shoe was big enough that they could just, they had crawled on, obviously, right. and they were just hanging out. Because that's what bed bugs do. They just, well, you know, it's an yeah, accidental... Yeah, like they'll just them. hang out. So if you just gone outside the stage, you would be down Yeah, they'd fall off. They don't have like little claws to, yeah, to, to hang. Yeah. yeah, no, there's no little claws to hang on. So even just in walking, that's why, um, that's how people tend to drop bed bugs because in their walking, they cannot like grip and hang on, right? It's accidental that you end up bringing them with you but they will drop off as yeah. they go. They won't scatter, they're not like cockroaches where you flick on the lights and <laughs> everything goes. They're actually very slow moving. They actually have very poor eyesight as well. So they basically track a person through their carbon dioxide trail and their heat trail. So even if you shone a flashlight on bed bugs, it may realize, oh, there's something bright on me, and it'll, it'll move, but they're lazy, so they, they, they will eventually move <laughs> out of the way so that they're in a darker place because they do, prov they do like dark areas. But as also as their population grows and they're vying for food source, it doesn't mean that during the day they won't feed because normally it's their behavior to feed between 3 and 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Um, becoming active usually around 11 o'clock in the evening. But if the population is very large, you will see them moving around during the day because all the bed bug bites that I've ever gotten, I've gotten during the day. I've never gotten at night and it's in while I'm visiting clients. Um, so if they're hungry and they realize there's a food source there, they will come out and try to feed. So what I do as soon as I get home, um, I take off everything that I'm wearing so this is right outside my door. I take off everything and I enter into my laundry room and everything just goes into the dryer. My shoes, 
I actually just leave them outside. But you're seeing these visually, like when you yeah, look, you can you're, see you're them. Easily you can see them. You, you just, can well, absolutely see someone them. Who's not, let's Even say. someone who's not, you can see them. You will know if a place is severely infested upon entering the unit, because when you walk in, you will see little things crawling all over the floor. Okay, they're the size of an apple seed, so you can see them. The only ones that you may have a harder time of seeing are the first three instars, because they are small. The first instar is as small as a pinhead. The second one is only slightly bigger. But by the third one, you can see it. I mean, you can still see a first, second, and third instar, but you have to know exactly what you're looking for. It's just because they're really, really small, right? But you can see them. Same with the eggs. You can actually see the eggs. A lot of people think you can't see the bed bug eggs, but you can. Right? You just have to know what you're looking for, because otherwise you'll think it's dust as opposed to being eggs. Okay? But you can see them. And are the eggs, sorry, no, I was just going to ask, are the eggs clustered? Really? Yeah, they're usually in clusters of three or four, but usually where they lay the eggs, they tend to always come back and lay the eggs there. So as the infestation grows, you'll see a bigger and bigger cluster of eggs there. They can die in cold. But you need a sustained temperature of at least minus 20 degrees Celsius for at least two weeks. And if the bed bug is able to find an area where it can be slightly protected, it can still survive that. So, so it's undetermined really for cold, unless you're using cryonite freezing. But heat, we know heat kills all stages of the bed bug. So whether it's the eggs, uh, any instar stage between one and five before it reaches adult and the adults.